Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. On today's episode, you're in for an absolute treat because today we're going to check out John and Jeremy's absolutely impeccable six by two and a third by two and a third mixed reef. All right, thanks for joining me on another episode of Parker's Reefs. And as mentioned in the intro, my family and I have just got back from visiting John, Debbie, and Jeremy Sim, checking out their incredible almost 1,000 liter mixed reef tank. John's one of those guys that I absolutely love chatting reef tanks about. We could talk for days, and uh, today was no exception. But I'm really excited to showcase this tank to you, all you viewers at home because it's an absolute testament of the amount of work and uh, thinking and just effort that he puts into this tank. So uh, I figure we may as well jump straight into it and uh, get firing some questions at John. Here we go. All right, John, tell us about this incredible mixed reef you got going here. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks, Sam. And um, it's uh, been running for four and a half years. Uh, we were pretty lucky in the beginning. I've got a son in the metal industry, so we made the stand for us at an extra uh, bit height to fit the opening we had. Yeah. Um, what sort of dimensions are we talking? I mean, we're, we're uh, six foot yeah, long. but So uh, it's six foot long, but it's an extra four inches on the end. So it's 28 by 28 inches. Right, right. A little bit bigger than the standard. The original intent was to set it into the wall. Uh, we had a few engineering issues with that, so it just sits on its own stand now. But um, stands incredibly over-engineered. It's like <laughs> five mil tubular, you know, 50 mil. It, the sun went overboard. Uh, we had four bikes just getting the stand in. But anyway... Um, <laughs> It's, uh, yeah, it's with the sump about 940 litres in total. Um, it ran as a Fowler system for the first uh, 12 months. Mm -hmm. uh, and then my wife made a comment one night that there was no wow factor. Um, <laughs> and within weeks it became a reef. So uh, we sort of worked on it uh, ever since. Since then, I always wanted a mixed reef. I didn't want to, actually, like most people, I wasn't really into the SPS. When we first got started, we, uh, we had lots of stuff that moved and floated around. But like always, you, you sort of move into the SBS and it grows on you over time. As soon as you see it encrust and grow, the bug yep. bites. Yep. Yeah, quite a bit. So, um, yeah, since then we've, you know, been picking up corals from all sorts of people. There's, as I mentioned to you before, Sam, I think there's four pieces in there out of your original tank, the one you broke down, and they're all thriving. Happy days. Yep. Um, and you know we, we spread our money around a little bit. We, we go to a few different um, shops. We shop at Uni Hill, which is probably our closest, uh, yeah, but yeah. also at Deer Park and Williamstown. Um, Fish-wise, we've got a bit of a mixed bag in there. Um, we've fed a few of them since day one, the, the Chromis and the, the pair of clowns um, and the big blonde Nasso Tang's been with us pretty much since day one. I love that Nasso, so yeah, his, chunky, the yeah, streamers his, are just crazy, yeah. it's just a um, majestic looking fish. Yeah, and we weren't too creative with his name, he's just called Blondie. <laughs> um, we do name a lot of our fish, not all of them, but a lot of them. Um, the, the Blue Tang, well, the Blue Tang's got two names, he's either Fatty or Alan. <laughs> Now, I know Fatty came about because he's a hippo. Yeah, he's hippo tank. So I need to know the background on Alan. How, how so was... Alan DeGeneres was the name of <laughs> uh, the voice behind Dory in the film. Oh, okay. Um, All right. Phew. Yeah. I was going to say, <laughs> <laughs> you just call it Alan Fatty. <laughs> That's brutal. But uh, yeah, no, that makes uh, sense, so Alan, Debbie, because of Funning Dory. Yep, Debbie calls him Alan. We call him Fatty, Jeremy and I. Nice, nice. Um, the Bellas Angel there, again, not too original the name's Bella. <laughs> Our clowns are not original either. There's Coral and Marlin. They're gorgeous, those clowns, the way they uh, host in that, um, or the, the, ho the dam hosts them. Yeah. Um, I got some brilliant pictures that I'll overlay, just showing them, just loving life sitting in there, which is really cool to see. Um, other fish that are named, we've got Sultan sitting right up front and centre there for you. He's our liar tail male. Yeah, there he is um, down here. We did have uh, a school of females in there, and he's changed over about, probably took about 12 to 18 months for him to fully change. He's a gorgeous species now, so he's got the name Sultan because he's got his hair on. I absolutely love the male lyre tails, the colour they have, but also that, um, I mean, the females have it too, that like crosshatch yep. coloration to them. It's something you yeah, only really gorgeous. see when you're looking close. It's just such an intricate detail. I know some Anthea snobs turn their nose up at lyre tails because they're the 
probably the e easiest of, of um, Anthea's um, or Anthea uh, snobs, but uh, I mean, the, the yeah. colors of them, the, the fact that they are a bit hardier, I don't know why that's a bad point. That's a great point because yeah, I know yeah. a majority of Anthea's, if you don't feed them eight times a day, they, yeah, they, <laughs> they turn they their nose up and die, you. which yeah, doesn't yeah. really work so well in a mixed reef. But um, man, those are Anthea's and yeah, that, uh, that Sultan, he is an absolute stunner. <laughs> what a gorgeous fish. And being able to see him transform is... Um, it was quite a... What an opportunity, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was really interesting to watch him change slowly. Yeah. Um, I did take pictures over a couple of months, but um, I lost the camera that I had on, unfortunately. <laughs> Bummer. But anyway, um, the, the rash you see swimming around at the top. It's yes. called Ruby. A um, little bit of a bully. Knocked off a couple of other rests we had, but um, you settled down now that those other ones are out of the tank. Uh, he's a good sized unit too. Yeah. He's actually coming up to the camera now. He wouldn't do that before when I had the still camera out, but um, we'll get the footage while we can because yeah. <laughs> he's, um, he's a beautiful fish. So um, oh, I couldn't even tell you the total number of fish we've got in there. I'm not you got sure. a few in there. It's great. It's a lovely yeah. community tank. What about this yellow tang? Tell me the story behind him. So um, my son Jeremy went to a guy that was closing down his tank and was given uh, the tang for free. His name's Mel, short for Mellow Yellow. <laughs> um, yeah, got him for free. God, he'd be worth probably over a thousand bucks now. Yeah, <laughs> you wouldn't um, see that happening uh, over the last six months or so. Yeah. But um, I mean, back in the uh, days where yellow tangs were a little bit easier to obtain, but mm. uh, what a stunning specimen he is. Just yeah, he's beautiful. We, we do like feeding. Oh, we just got a nip then from Freddie. <laughs> um, right? We do like feeding our fish, so they're all pretty fat. Um, yeah, it's the fish themselves are all really healthy. We haven't very rarely have a, a, a fatality without a, an obvious reason, like yep. being attacked or something like that. Yes. Thankfully, that hasn't happened for a long time. Um, very well established and settled tank now. Yeah, very much so. We we have put a fish or two in there recently. We've put a flame hawk fish in there. His name's Radar. I don't know if you'll see him. He's still a little bit skittish. Sure. Um, but uh, yeah, this is the last one to go in. And we do have, let's, let's lay the cards on the table. We've got a bit of an aptasia problem in here at the moment, it's, and it's getting worse. So behind you, Sam, there's a, a um, quarantine tank set up with a little Australian stripe in it. That's our uh, aptasia problem solution right there. He's yep. uh, just settling in there, ready to um, get in here and uh, have a mince. I mean, you say you've got an aptasia problem. I mean, well, you've got one rock that's got a few on it, but... Um, yeah, and there are a few others even... here and there. If you look or have a good look around, you'll find a few more. Yeah, it's, it's mixed reef life, you know. It, yeah, unless just they really start rock, killing coral. That rock in particular looks pretty awful, though. So. Yeah, anyway. fair enough. You're going to have trouble <laughs> establishing coral on that rock now. But, yeah. I mean, if you have the old one pop up in between corals there, I, I wouldn't stress too much. Yeah. I mean, if you can reach him, attack him. If you can't, don't worry. But, yeah, hopefully that striper, you'll sort out that rock and then you can um, continue the, the trend of some incredible corals you've got going on in here and um, use every bit of real estate available to you. Yeah, well this part here, we're just beside with those Aptasia are all, <laughs> all new territory. We did have a big leather, it's now over in that tank. Yeah. And it is massive, it's about 15 inches across. Um, it's gonna be lit up a bit better with a Kessel very shortly. Um, but it was taking up that entire space on that rock. So those three uh, torches and all the gonies around the bottom are pretty new additions. Beautiful. Um, haven't had one for two years, a torch or a goni, because when I did get them, I managed to kill them pretty quickly. <laughs> so uh, it's been two years, so that I think the tank's a bit more mature now. We're dosing manganese, which I know the gonies like. So for sure. let's hope that sort of sorts them out. Um, and once we get rid of that aptasia problem, we've got a little bit more real estate we can Definitely. pop some things on. I mean, for going from not having a uh, goni or a torch now, you've got five stunning gonies. Or yeah. Six, sorry, there's another one in there. Yeah, there's a little one up the back. <laughs> a little one up the back. There, he was so a gift from Ollie, actually. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then yeah. uh, three really nice contrasting torches too. Yeah. Just beautiful. So yeah, they're all doing pretty well. Coral-wise, um, Jeez, I wouldn't know what my favourite was if you asked me, actually. <laughs> oh, you're a step ahead of me. That was going to be my next question. Yeah, pick, pick a handful of some of your, uh, your highlights. Um, they don't have to be your favourite. Probably probably the new, you know, the Gonies. And sure, it's where you're Because they're so fresh, it's yeah, where yeah. they are right now. But the, I think it's the Symphilia, the big one at the front yeah, there. Yeah, this thing's absolutely stunning. Um, and what a showpiece-sized coral. Yeah, we nearly lost it 
a few months ago, it faded colour really badly. It's, it's still not back to 100%, but it's a hell of a lot better than what it was. Um, and we discovered our iodine had dropped really low. It, you know, I hadn't done an ICP test for probably four or five months and it had, been, it had dropped. So, my mistake. Um, but we've got it back up now and he's making a recovery, which is great. That's, I mean, uh, realistically, you say my mistake, but um, to me, that's the... That's a perfect example of an experienced reefer having a look at their tank visually, seeing something change that's been in there a long time and going, something's not right. Mm. You could run around in circles, tipping bottles of this and that into your tank. Instead, you're going, something's up. I'm going to do an ICP, identified the problem, addressed it, and you've saved a, an absolute showpiece in the tank. So, I mean, it's a closed ecosystem. <laughs> Things are going to happen. Um, <laughs> they are. I, I would put that down to an absolute victory. What, what a perfect example of just following what your tank's telling you. Yep, thanks for that. Um, you know, we're, as you can see, we're a bit all over the place. We've got a bit of everything. That's what I love about <laughs> um, it. You know, heaps of zoas in there as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's just a, it's a great mixed roof and it supports everything from softies all the way up to, you know, Absolutely. the hard, hardcore SBS. Definitely. Um, which all look, looking pretty healthy. Um, yeah. We're pretty happy with it the way it is. Speaking of healthy SPS, tell us about this gigantic acro here in the middle. It's just, um, I don't know how well it's going to come up in colour, but the, uh, how well it's going to come up on camera, but the colour in person is um, piercing to the eyeball. So tell us Jeremy the history might, of that. Jeremy might be able to tell us more about that. He actually picked that one up. Was that for free, Jim? The purple one? The purple one? Yeah, that was another freebie. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's where the, the purple one in your tank came from? Yeah, yeah. No, um, it's one of my favourites. Uh, it, it, as I said, it can look bluish or purple depending on the time of the lighting or mm -hmm. whether it's happy or not or you know where the, the levels are in the tank. It, it sure. looks more blue today probably. Yeah, it but looks if very... you do if you do have a look at the frags on the left in that corner, you'll notice they're much more purple. Definitely, yeah. Um, we can see the main colony there directly under a um, radiant, and it's yep. it's quite blue. But then uh, the frags directly from that colony over here that look that I wouldn't say I didn't have don't have the par meter on me I wouldn't say they're short of light but just not directly under a radian they're on a little bit of an angle there and they are definitely more purple so I don't yeah. know if it's light related flow related I fragging think, related yeah it could I think it is lighting personally yeah because I know we've got about 400 par right at the top of the tank where the nice. where that acro is but it does drop off sharply on the side sure so um, in fact, if I dropped that rack down lower, the par would come up because it gets reflection off the, the glass. Yeah, wow, the interesting, yeah, yeah. Um, interesting corner to have it in. Um, what else can we talk about, Sam? Uh, Tell us about the uh, infrastructure in the system. What, what, okay. What's running? What's making this incredible system tick? So lighting-wise, we've got uh, four Gen 3 Radeon Pros. Um, we did have three running uh, parallel along the tank until about 18 months ago. I bought an extra one and turn them around, put the diffusers on, because we were getting far too much shadowing okay. at the bottom, and that's really made a huge difference. The coral growth took off as Beautiful, well with that yeah. extra light. The diffusers just really helped <coughs> spread it out, and yeah, I mean, obviously the addition difference. of an extra light would help too, but, um, but uh, yeah, adding the diffuser, having um, an extra light on there, and having them across the tank. Yeah. Just, um, and, and they still only run at 70% at their peak. Yeah, wow, well, So okay. they could go up if yep. we wanted to, but um, yeah. We're Definitely does not look like it needs it. I mean, no, we've got SPS growing like that. Um, so water movement wise, uh, we've got a couple of coral box QP16s on this end that either side of the overflow that push straight down on a wave pattern. Mm -hmm. They're met at the other end by a uh, one of the new jump series max spec 4000. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, and it's pushing against it, so it creates enormous water movement at the top. Yes. Um, and good flow right throughout the tank. And we do have a little QP uh, coral box, a small one up the end for a little bit of extra flow on the hammers that are up the end, yeah, down just, the bottom. Just pushes down along there just to get to yeah. the hammers, which, I mean, I haven't even gone over to the other side of the tank yet to have a look, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll... maybe we should move around. We'll pop um, around here. The kids are just in here playing uh, Nintendo, but um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll sneak into their space for a second just to check out the third viewing angle of this tank. Yeah. Yeah, so without that little pump there, those hammers are just a little bit too still for my liking. They, yeah, they weren't sure. getting quite enough movement. They get quite a bit now and it ramps up and down. These, the gyre is on a reef mode pattern, so it's up and down, random. Yes. Um, this side of the tank, maintenance-wise, is a little bit harder. When we put it in, we didn't have this side open. Um, okay. Big mistake, and had I had a chance to do it again, I would have had this with an opening side as well to get in here. So this yeah. side of the tank doesn't get as much love and care as uh, the other side. 
Um, so whatever we put in here has got to be pretty hard. You've got to pretty much look after itself because yeah, we can't really reach it. it. It's quite difficult. Yep. So you're literally reaching in from the opening on the other side over the top of the yeah. SPS and down. It wasn't as bad when the SPS wasn't <laughs> grown in, but now it's quite difficult. First world problems, eh? Yeah. <laughs> so it's a good problem to have. Yeah, um, that's it. Otherwise, yeah, mostly uh, your softies right along the bottom here. Not a lot on the rock because, again, the, the way the lighting is with the growth in the SPS, there's not a lot of light that gets down to the lower depths. Sure. So not a lot of SPS on this side. We've got a few bits and pieces. I mean, you say not a lot of SPS, but you've got this incredible uh, cherry blossom there and then this fireworks acro just, just above it. Just, and that's, um, that's your glowing. one there, Sam, the original one. Ah, nice, nice. <laughs> Good to see some strains continuing, it's great. Yeah. And I absolutely love this chalice down here. The colours on it are just to die for. It's, it's yeah, beautiful. It is Aqua, beautiful. teal, orange, pink. It's actually just taste. taken off. It's yeah, been in nice. there for probably 12 months now and just started to take off. Just gone through its, its dormant yeah, phase and so it's woken up. I and do like chalice, as you can see, there's a few in the tank. Yeah, so. no, it's stunning corals. Um, you know, but you know, little finger leather sitting over the yeah. end there gets no love whatsoever. That was a one single piece. It's absolutely and it gorgeous. gets blown around by the by the pump, but seems to love it. <laughs> Definitely oh, and there's radar swimming around. Yeah, there. we see the little flame hawk there, just um, doing some laps around the pump, just getting these steps in for the day. Beautiful. Yeah, this is a really nice viewing angle. I mean, um, it's also quite impressive what you've done flow wise on on a tank that has three viewing angles. Um, it's yeah, it's a little bit complicated. I mean, I'd love the gyro not to be where it is because it does disturb that end view a bit. Sure. But without it, there's just not enough flow in the tank. Yeah. Um, so It's the age-old peninsula. I know this is technically not a peninsula, but it's a three-angled yeah. tank or three-viewing angle tank and um, and a, a large one of that. It's 6 by 28 by 28 yeah. um, to, to have the flow in such a manner to get SBS growing well. LPS growing well and even softies all in harmony together is uh, quite an achievement. Yeah. yeah, we're pretty happy with it. Um, you know, we've got this mad Zoa rock here that if anyone wants to hit me up for, I'd love to get rid of the big one. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got a gorgeous assortment of uh, Zoas on there all growing away together. Just You're just looking for real estate to put something else in well, here I've, I've, uh, What I don't like about Zoas is when they grow into each other. Okay. Because one will always take over the other. They do, yeah. Which we're seeing a little bit on that big rock. Sure. So I've now got, I don't know if you noticed, there's five smaller rocks in here <laughs> that have got just one species on, yes. um, one type of zoa, and we're going to arrange them, hopefully sure. in that space where the big one is. But if no one is interested, <laughs> we'll just find spots for the other rocks. Fair enough, <laughs> fair enough. I'll we'll see, see what uh, we can find. But um, why don't you come around and show us the, uh, the sump and the filtration on, on this system, yeah. because I know there's a little bit of a story to tell there. Okay, um, so where do we start? Uh, return pump wise, we've got, you know, we've got a couple of socks on the end. It's our main uh, mechanical filtration. Sure. Um, Jeremy, Le Jeremy religiously changes those out in about every three to four days, max. Perfect. Um, we were getting a lot of detritus on it when we fixed the overflow, thanks to you. Um, <laughs> we had a, that overflow problem. Yes. That got fixed, but then we found we were getting a lot of detritus from the second overflow yes so it's now got two socks on it's made a huge difference it's a very simple sump runs through that main return with a bit of um, live rock and a few um, bio balls down there through into the uh, skimmer chamber we've got a good skimmer got a, the big cove in there um, it's a i200 works a treat you just apart from seeing the fine bubbles in there you wouldn't even know it's running dead silent it's, well compared to the high door we had yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, I love the high door work-wise, it, it was a real beast, it used to pull some gunk out. Yes. But the moment the impellers started to wear, they got pretty noisy. They got noisy. Yep. And so the impellers weren't cheap, they were replacing 75 bucks to replace them. But if anyone's interested in a second-hand one, <laughs> I've still got the high door. Anyone wants a noisy workhorse? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the best part about them was this one was a recirculating one with twin pumps, yes. so it didn't matter about the water height. Sure. Oh, wait. Anyway. <laughs> Got the good cove now, which yes. is great. That came from Deer Park at the sure. day. Uh, through there into a massive number of bio blocks. Yeah, you got no um, shortage of um, yeah, bacteria just, houses in there. Probably just keep chucking more in there. Um, we've got a couple of verses under there that do our auto water changes sure. on the top right hand side. And it's how many, how many litres a day do you do? 15 litres a day we change. So yeah, it works nice. out to about 11 or 12% a week. Yep, yep, perfect. Does um, the trick nicely. 
and we've got the tanks on a daisy chain so the water change comes out of here and goes across into Jeremy's tank. Perfect. Um, so I don't think, very rarely do tests on that tank because yeah. whatever's here is going to be exactly 15, 15 litres, litres a, day. a day in there changes the entire volume in 20 days. That's so. right, yeah. And I mean, you're not exactly heavily stocked in there no, either, so it's, right. it's got to do, it's, yeah, the water then, changes will keep that. So and then the third pump pumps out of there, out to our waste. Perfect. So, and we've got two big IBCs just outside the window there. Yes. Where we use, uh, we use in uh, natural salt water. Yes. Um, would never mix again. I mixed in the 1980s, would never <laughs> do it again. Uh, sorry, I didn't quite finish here. Uh, so through the return chamber, and I'll say it before Sam gets to say it, yes, we've got a Jabao return pump in there. Whew, an um, absolute showpiece of a the... uh, six foot, nearly thousand litre system in here running <laughs> off the Jabao return. All right, I'll let you have your go. Um, <laughs> It's the big 12,000, but we have got a brand new spanking new one sitting out in the shed in case anything ever goes wrong. <laughs> Touch wood, that one's been in there for three years and yeah, been that's, fine. Yeah, that's um, trucking along just fine. Uh, then we've got the thing that saved our lives, I think, was the sulfur reactor. Again, Sam put me onto this, geez, how long ago? 18 months, maybe two years ago. Yeah. We had problems with our nitrates, could not get it below 20. Yes. And it sat at 20 for probably 12 months. And then out of the blue, I saw you did a video Yep. on sulfur reactors and then I spoke to you about it and it's been in there ever since and our nitrates now sit between 8 and 10. Beautiful. Um, phosphorate bounces around a little bit but usually between about 0 0.03 to 0 0.08. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It will up and down a little bit um, but very rarely does it get over that so it's pretty stable. Um, we run ALK at around 8, um, calcium about 440, uh, Magnesium about 1380. Yep. Um, everything cool. else, and we're running with Randy's recipe. Yeah, yep. And coral essentials, um, trace, you know, elements. trace elements. Yeah, yep. Um, yeah, and we do, and we do do hand dosing as well based sure. on ICP tests. So sure, we've got a bit of that happening. But um, um, with your dosing, how, what sort of amounts of dosing is going into a system growing yeah, like this? Yeah, that's becoming a bit of a challenge. We're now <laughs> dosing about 160 mils a day of elk and and yeah. calcium. Yep. So we're probably at that point where I need to make a decision about a, a calcium reactor. Sure. Um, not a decision I want to make, um, but... Yeah, absolutely, you don't have to. If the dosing is working for you, you can, it just... Um... Well, it continues to increase though. Every yeah. week I'm upping it just a tiny bit. So the, the coral consumption is obviously, yep. as you yep. can see, everything's growing. So it just keeps going up and up and up. I know uh, one of my friends over in South Australia mixes up uh, his Randy's recipe in 200 litre batches at a time. Oh, wow. <laughs> I thought I was doing all right doing about 25 litres. He's got, he's got three big olive barrels just outside the uh, wall of his tank next to his IBC and he has uh, some litre metres bringing the dosing levels in and oh. uh, he swears by it, but uh, I think he's mad. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, just to finish that off, simple 25 litre bin from Bunnings is our uh, fresh water top off. Perfect, easy access. And behind that we've got a reef doser, forehead uh, dosing pump. Yes. And a couple of single John lens as well. Um, not all of them are being used at the moment. We're running a uh, phosphate reducer. Um, uh, obviously, it's running the alk and the calcium, magnesium, and we've also got a potassium running. Ah, oh, beautiful, yeah, yep. The rest of it's sort of done by hand, anything we need sure. to balance. Yeah, any little minor yeah. trace elements, but yeah, potassium's yeah. one I find that um, once you get a good established system, particularly mixed reef, that uh, yeah, it gets consumed quite quickly. Yeah. So having that dosing, I mean, it's probably a good testament of, of good component of the success you've mm -hmm. had. The only other thing I'd mention, the height of the stand, I know you've got a tall stand now. Yeah. Um, and this has been a godsend, right? Because I don't have a great back and, yep. you know, I mean, Jeremy does the bulk of it, but getting down under a 900 tank. It's uh, hard work. It was hard work. Even the, the little one there, we got that made to 950. Yes. Um, so, yeah, um, it just happened to fit in because the opening in that wall was a metre high. So Perfect. That's where it was. So. It looks, I mean, it's, a, it's at the right height. For me, I mean, you've got, it separates two living areas and your kitchen and it's, it, you can see it. You don't have to sort of look down. It's it's right yeah. there to see it. Beautiful tank. Yeah, um, well, this one to your right started as a uh, frag tank. Um, not that long ago, we, we had a custom made um, at Williamstown. Um, set it up as a frag tank last August. And after six almost six months it just would not settle could not get rid of the cyano cyano mm -hmm. sorry cyano um it was fluctuating with its uh 
nutrient level. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we do have a heap of, had a heap of biomedia in it that came from the big tank. We'd put a heap in there extra newing where we're going to move it out. Um, but in the end, I just got that frustrated with it. I said to Jeremy, you can have this tank if you want to shut down your water box, which he did. Yep. <laughs> um, so in here, maybe Jeremy should talk about this, given it's really his tank. No, he's happy for me to talk. So <laughs> the rock at the back there houses a goby shrimp uh, pair. They're not out at the moment. It's all um, good. But we that's why the sand is everywhere. The, we can see their home there. Yep. 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 Um, Jeremy chucked a piece of GPS oh, in there. The, just oh, there come out is. for a look, yeah. Just come out for the camera. <laughs> so that's Dave. Good Gobi Dave. That's Dave and his, uh, his mate's called Dozer. <laughs> they, yeah, uh, he absolutely loves the camera. They're pretty useless, yeah. And Jeremy Hands feeds them through a tube wow. so that the, um, the shrimp will get food. He yeah, comes nice. out and gets it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we, look, we, we couldn't get this tank settled no matter what we did. Jeremy had the, um, the NEMS already that he got one from you. And yes. Um, the minute we put sand in this tank, it was a bare bottom, yes. obviously, because we were fracking. Yep. I reckon within a week of putting sand in the bottom, yeah. it settled. <laughs> it was like... Notice to those guys out there that want to set up bare bottom reef tanks. Yep. It's not easy. No. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it, it, it's still very new. It's still yep. only last August, so we're talking, what, seven months old? Okay, yep. In total, and it's only been like this for probably a month. Wow, okay. Or well, six weeks. Six weeks. Um, so yeah, it's, look, it's a bit of a mixed bag at the moment. I've taken some zoas out of the big tank that I didn't want and threw them in the jury. Yep, yep. <laughs> so he's sort of getting my secondhand things at the moment. <laughs> but one of the big reasons we did it was that massive leather in the back corner yes, there. Yep. That was taking up far too much real estate in the big tank. So it is going to be looked after a bit better. We've got a, another stand coming hopefully before Easter. We're going to mount a kessel on there, give him a Beautiful. bit more light. Um, but I think he'll be fine. Um, obviously, the NEMS love it in there. There's, there was one, there's now three. Yeah, they look great. A um, couple of nice clowns, which my grandson named Cookies and Cream. <laughs> <laughs> they always do, don't they? Yeah, when they you, won't go in the NEM. When you set up a tank just for them to go in the NEM, <laughs> the little buggers never do. Yeah, and there's a Tamini <laughs> tang in there, Tommy. Yeah, he's um, gorgeous. Yeah, very camera shy, even he when, is, you, when yeah. there's no camera. He, he's a uh, very timid creature. Yeah, very timid at the moment. There he goes. Um, he's got a lot better. Um, normally, you would only see him when you're fed. So yeah, well. For him to come here when there's two of us standing is quite an achievement. It's a big achievement, yeah. Um, and there's a little mandarin fish in there as well. I did see him a second ago. I'm not sure if we got him on camera. In that corner. Yeah, I when I was looking for the goby, I saw him swim by. Oh, there he is up there, yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Um, and how long have you had him, Jeff? Um, well, he was in, well, he's been through a few tanks. You probably had him for a month. Okay. And yeah, he's, nice. um, he's prepared food for the Beautiful. He eats food, yeah. Yes, yeah. So you'll, you'll actually see him chase the food when we put it in. So. That's what you want, happy days. Yep. Cool, just get some uh, green star polyps on the back wall. Yeah, Jeremy wants to grow them right at the back wall. Yeah, yeah. Have that bit of movement. That'll contrast so nicely against the NEMS in there too. Yeah. Um, the NEMS haven't moved off that rock, touch wood. <laughs> um, actually, I didn't mention that at the big tank. We've had that NEM in there. Yes since day one and it is never moved. never moved we've been so lucky right, again it's, touch wood it's obviously um enjoying life there <coughs> i mean the clowns are very happy to go in it and it's got yeah. just the oh, right it, amount of light and flow and it is split about seven or eight times and yes. we you know move the pups on um but yeah it's never moved off that rock happy days so again touch wood <laughs> that doesn't change sorry back to this tank all good um there's not a lot to tell just one radion at the moment but we are going to put a kessel to highlight the the um the big leather yep underneath um where we get underneath it's not all um the one thing i hated about the big tank was the cord management so we have got a power board on that side now we got from deer park yep and jeremy's sort of made up all that so it's a bit better than the big tank nice nice but again very simple overflow with a sock on it yep you know the skimmer chamber and just a heap of biomedia there are some bricks in there as well somewhere yep, yep. Um, we'll probably bolster it up a little bit more and it's running it's also got a canister on it a, a fos 150 it's actually got matrix in it yep just for a bit of extra bio load for sure a little ato reservoir built in the sump yep that's pretty handy this this tank only uses about four liters of fresh water a day yeah nice. the big one's about 10 so yes 
and you've got a little versa in there that's doing the water change out from this yeah, tank the voice to the drain. Versus, um, outward. Yep, um, beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's pretty straightforward, really. It's a simple setup. Simple setup. But it works for us. Gives you room to it's pop things. Based it on what worked over here, so. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've had a lot of people say, oh, there's no refugium, there's no calcium reactor, there's, you know, no, this, that, you know, well, it just works for us. So. That's it. It's the old KISS simple. Yeah, but I think the, KISS I think the, the sulfur reactor was what saved the day because... Yeah, you got a it. decent um, fish load in there. Um, yeah. I mean, which is great. But uh, yeah, nitrates, I mean, phosphate's easy to tackle with, with GFO if need be yeah. or, or lance. Yeah. But um, nitrate was one that um, I struggled with on my tank, particularly once it had got a few years old and um, yeah. Yeah, the sulfur just knocks that for six, which was great. Yeah, well, that, that sort of saved the day for us and it keeps yeah. it at a decent level now. Um, and that's probably the most sophisticated piece of gear on the whole system. <laughs> And it does the trick. Yeah, and it works. work. So yeah, we're that's what you happy. want. You don't want complicated things on there that are just for looks. You need them to carry their weight, that's for sure. Yeah. Beautiful. Any, any closing words of wisdom or advice for people wanting to achieve this level of success on their uh, reef tank? Um, I think there's a couple of things. One, patience, which we had to learn a few different times. <laughs> don't we all? Yeah. The second thing is find someone you trust and listen to one person. Like, um, I people probably know I've been speaking to you now for nearly three years or two and a half years um, I think that the, the idea is find someone who's got a tank that you want to aspire to sure and if you're going to take advice from people and you're happy with that person's tank take advice from them you know YouTube's great if you want a quick answer but you'll get 20 different answers yeah um, you know any of the forums are the same so um, and I, w I previously I would have said stick to one LFS as well yep but that's thinking about my experience back in the 80s where you relied sure. on the people and the owners for their knowledge and yes. you, you know you couldn't get online and find something out you had to go to a library to get a book these days it's not like that and and most of the LFS around town they're only surviving because they're giving you good advice and selling you good equipment and good livestock so yes. um, I'm happy to shed my, share my money around to a few different <laughs> LFS um, but yeah I, th I think if you find someone you're happy to listen to take their advice um, and and you know, uh, thanks to you, Sam, our tank looks the way it is. A uh, few things you, you have put us onto have made a huge difference. So, mate, I, I feel ashamed to try and claim any credit whatsoever. I think <laughs> you're underselling uh, the work you guys put into this tank. And um, oh, the work Jeremy puts in, he does all the heavy <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Jeremy does all the physical labour, but um, I mean, two brains are always better than one. And obviously, between the two of you working through this system, what you've achieved is um, absolutely world class. So you should be very, very proud. Thanks very much, mate. Cheers. All right, guys, we will wrap this video up here. As you can tell, John and I could talk reef tanks all day long, but uh, I've got to try and keep this video to some sort of respectable time limit. So uh, here we are a good 30 minutes in, and uh, like I said, we could go for hours, but uh, hopefully this has given you a good overview of what an incredible mixed reef system this is here. And uh, if you have any questions for John, Jeremy, or myself, feel free to pop them in the comment section down below. As you know, I personally respond to each and every comment that goes in there. So if you are wanting to get hold of me that is the best way other than that if you enjoyed the video i do ask if you can give it a thumbs up that helps me out a long way on this uh, youtube venture and as usual if you are yet to subscribe please consider doing so it takes two seconds of your time costs no money whatsoever just click that button in the bottom right hand corner other than that guys till next time stay safe keep reefing cheers bye